Hi, I'm Fraser Douglas, the avid tent camper. The other day I was looking through the internet and I found an article that was about common camping mistakes. So I read the article, but I was very disappointed because some of the items that it listed, I didn't feel were very big mistakes at all. And it also ignored what I consider to be some of the most important mistakes that camping families can make. So I decided to prepare my own list of 15 mistakes, which I feel could ruin your next camping trip. See what you think. Perhaps the worst mistake that a novice camping family can make is deciding to stay in a campground that is not safe and secure. In particular, small, remote, free, and unsupervised campgrounds frequently attract drunken parties, drug users, drug dealers, thieves, sexual perverts, and other undesirable characters. So camping families should avoid these small, remote, insecure campsites and choose to stay in large state and federal campgrounds that have entrance security, lock gates at night, campground host, frequent park patrols, and other security measures. Even if a safe camping destination has been selected, many novice camping families make a second major mistake by not reserving their campsite months ahead of time. When they drive to the campground, they discover that all of the campsites have been claimed or there's only one or two very undesirable sites left. Many camping mistakes are made by not packing the right equipment. Perhaps the most important thing to pack are plenty of warm clothes, even in the middle of summer. In this regard, you should avoid all cotton garments, such as blue jeans, sweatshirts, sweatpants, flannel shirts, cotton underwear, and cotton socks. And instead, select garments made from wool, polyester, fleece, nylon, or silk. Because garments made from these latter materials will wick moisture away from your body, hold in heat even when wet, and dry faster than cotton garments. Specific garments to include are wool socks, thermal underwear pants, athletic pants, long sleeve t-shirt, fleece or wool jacket, and a hat. Oh yeah, and don't forget your raincoat. When the temperature drops in the late evening or the early morning or after a rain front passes through, you can layer these garments together for considerable warmth. The second most important thing to pack is a comfortable mattress because sleeping on the cold, hard ground is the primary reason that many families never go camping again after their first trip. We typically lay a carpet down on the floor of our tent first to insulate us against the cold ground. Then we place three foam yoga mats on top of the carpet with three self-inflating insulated air mattresses on top of the yoga mats. Then we cover the three mattresses with a king-size fitted sheet. And we have a warm and comfortable king-size bed. After your warm clothes, tent, and bed, the fourth most important thing to pack, I believe, is a kitchen shelter. Now, many families take short weekend trips without a shelter, and you can survive without one. But having a covered shelter, especially one with sidewalls to block the wind, provides an immense amount of comfort. The canopy provides protection from the heat of the day, bright sunlight, and rain, but the sidewalls provide protection from the thing that I hate most during camping, and that is wind, especially when it's raining. Mosquito netting may be desirable in a few locations, but I feel that sidewalls provide much more comfort in almost any location. The last mistake I want to mention is failing to pack good quality 
kitchenware because if you want to cook good tasting meals, you have to have good quality kitchenware. So we pack a cast iron skillet and Dutch oven, several plates and pots made either from stainless steel or enameled steel, and wooden cooking utensils. We avoid aluminum products because it is difficult to simmer foods for long periods of time without scorching and because it is difficult to clean. In addition, some people say aluminum may pose health risk. And recently, we have discarded all of our plastic and nylon kitchenware because we prefer to use the kitchenware that was used by our pioneer ancestors and because plastics have a negative environmental impact. Now, let me discuss eight important mistakes that are frequently made after arriving at your campsite. The first decision you'll have to make after arriving at your campsite is where to set up your tent. Be sure to check the ground and set your tent up in the highest point and not the lowest point. Because you don't want to get flooded after heavy rainfall, and here in the eastern United States, it rains almost every camping trip. Many state and federal campgrounds offer elevated tent pads with good drainage, and when provided, be sure to set your tent up there. Other campgrounds offer large gravel campsites, and be sure to set your tent up on the gravel and not back in the woods. Unfortunately, some campgrounds only offer asphalt parking pads surrounded by low-laying ground area, and in these sites you have to set your tent up on the asphalt pad. If you use a tarp as a ground cloth, be sure that the edges of the tarp are folded under the tent, because if the edges of the tarp extend out beyond the side of the tent, it will act as a bowl, collect the water, and channel this water up under your tent where it will seep through your floor after a few hours. Perhaps the most common mistake that you will see in most campgrounds is setting up a kitchen canopy with a picnic table right in the middle of it. When this is done, the picnic table prevents you from walking around in the center of the canopy where the roof is high and it's the most comfortable place to walk. It would be much more practical and comfortable to set up small folding tables with your food prep and cooking areas around the edges of the canopy where the roof is lower and still have the center of the canopy for walking around. Another common camping mistake is feeding wildlife and or leaving food and food scraps laying around in the campsite when you leave or when you go to bed. But when you feed animals or make food available to them, they will become more aggressive toward people. They will litter campsites looking for food. They will destroy tents and other camping equipment looking for food. And they can cause personal injury. Furthermore, feeding wild animals can ultimately cause them to die prematurely. Another common camping mistake is leaving axes and tools and kitchenware and charcoal and firewood outside where it can get wet because the moisture will cause your tools to rust and make your fuel difficult to burn. So we leave these items either in the car or up under a tarp most of the time. You should bathe and put on clean clothes every night before going to bed because if you don't, you'll bring food smells inside the tent that could attract animals that will cause damage to the tent and possibly hurt you. For the same reasons, you should never bring food into the tent and never allow children to bring food into the tent. And to keep them from bringing food into the tent, you need to check their pockets every night before they come inside. Not wearing enough clothing at night is another common camping mistake. 
Although several people have offered semi-plausible reasons for sleeping with as few clothes as possible, their logic just does not hold up to actual reality. Warm clothing helps to hold in body heat. and This is important when you first go to bed at night, but it's even more important when you have to get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. So on cool nights, we typically wear wool socks, polyester athletic pants, at least one long sleeve t-shirt, polyester, and a polyester hoodie. The final mistake that I want to discuss is failing to open up all of your camping gear when you get home and laying it out to dry. Because if you fail to dry your tent and tarps, mold and mildew will develop and create a foul smell and cause your materials to rot prematurely. And if you fail to dry and oil your other metal camping equipment, rust will develop and this rust will impair their smooth functioning in the future. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this little video and I hope that it's given you some ideas about how you could prepare for your future camping trips a little bit better. For more information about tent camping history, equipment, procedures, destinations, and ethics, please visit my website, Modern Tent Camping. A link is provided in the description below. And don't forget that I offer good quality restored camp axes for sale. Remember, take more trips, travel further, visit more attractions, and save money. Go Tent Camping!